Welcome! It's Hit Friday. It's in the middle of March and it's finally getting springtime here in Denmark. It's not too warm, but it's still, you know, pretty good. 12, 13 degrees, something like that. Blue sky, beautiful, dry, perfect for pit fire. So today I'm going to do a bunch of experiments as usual. Things that I haven't tried before, things I did before, but want to try again in a better way. And in general, just have a blast of the day. So I hope you will join me and enjoy it just as much as I do. Welcome. I have a lot of pots that I want to try different things with uh, the pit fire. I have some uh, pots that are colored with the um, colored slip. Uh, I never tried that before. I have some pre-glazed uh, pots, pots that are glazed on the inside. I have some bowls that I also added some colored slip to. But as you may recall from my last video, I just got a, another barrel. So now I have two. So I think I'm gonna fire both of them today. I never tried that before, but it shouldn't be too much extra work, I think. So I'll do that. But the barrel that I just got was a little bit different than the first one because it has been used for paint. As you can see, there's some paint left inside this barrel. It's not much, but it's still enough that uh, it's a little more, it's just dirty. And so I want to get rid of that. And uh, the easiest way to do that is just to uh, let it on, uh, put a little fire on there and it's going to burn away. So I'm going to do that. I haven't actually tried this before, uh, but I'm thinking that I just need some, some rapid fire, so I'm just going to use some of this old uh, Christmas tree. Uh, it burns really, really well. Um, and uh, I'm just going to put that in here. Uh, a little bit of this. And um, this. Uh, I'm gonna save a little bit for um, the pit fire. So that's it. And I think I'm gonna add, uh, just gonna add a few of these um, heat beads, or whatever you call them, um, and some paper, that's always good. Uh, Like that, and then we're gonna light it and see what happens. Uh, it's hopefully not gonna explode. <laughs> I think not. It is a bit smoky. <laughs> So I moved a little bit away from the barrel uh, as I'm not sure that it is too healthy. So um, I think in a few minutes it's going to be burned out and uh, we can take a look inside and see how it turned out. In today's pit fire I'm going to use a lot of the materials that I usually use. So I have some uh, bicarbonate, uh, natrium bicarbonate, uh, copper, um, uh, a copper carbonate uh, that I love. It's a uh, nice coloring. Um, and uh, my favorite banana peels. I've been eating so many bananas in the past <laughs> in the past couple of months because I knew I was going to fire. Um, I have some, some leaves. Uh, these are from corn. They also give great uh, orangey kind of colors. Um, I have some chicken shit because I have chickens in my garden. I got some uh, straw uh, from uh, that I collected uh, from the seaside. And below this one, I have some uh, seaweed. Um, yeah, it's a little difficult to see here, but yeah, seaweed. Um, this particular seaweed actually turns out pretty dark, but uh, it's still beautiful. Leaves some nice patterns. Um, so I'm gonna pack them up uh, in this tinfoil sack as uh, usual. And uh, so I'll go ahead with that. 
there's a bunch of experiments that I want to do today. Um, one of them is, um, as you may recall from one of my previous videos, I will make a link to it here. I've been experimenting with combining glazing and pit fire. Uh, glazing is great because it seals the pot and it makes it waterproof, food safe and all that. But the pit fire is great because, well, it looks so great. But it, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, when, you, when you only pit fire, it's a low fire, so it's not completely food safe, not food safe at all, some would say, and it's not completely waterproof. So in my last video, I used some uh, uh, porcelain that I glazed on the inside, and then I used pit fire, uh, and I used flash fire uh, to color them on the outside, and it actually turned out much better than I expected. So now I'm taking it to uh, the next level. This is uh, stoneware, uh, kind of a moon shape uh, uh, base. And inside, I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, I glazed it uh, with this uh, greenish uh, glaze on the inside and uh, it's unglazed on the outside. Uh, so far the theory against this has been that because this is, uh, this is glaze fired, um, the clay had vitrified. And because it's vitrified, uh, the color from the pit fire will not attach itself. What I found is that, at least the way that I fire and the colorants that I use, it's not true. You can actually make uh, colors on it. But you need to use strong colorants. I do have some uh, steel wire, uh, copper and steel. Most often it just leaves a black mark. Uh, sometimes the copper can turn red or greenish. Not very often, but so you can use either one of them. I also have this uh, mesh uh, it's from a sponge where you expand it. And I think actually I'm gonna use this because it's helping um, sort of, of holding it all together um, like this and leave these beautiful patterns if you're lucky. Always a question of luck. So I'm gonna try to expand this like this. And this can also be helpful in, in holding um, a, a different combustibles. Uh, so like this. That's nice. Um, but I will also use uh, some of this uh, wire. Uh, I'm just gonna roll out some of it. Cut it off like this. And I can use it to emphasize some patterns like that. I have a little bit of straw I'm gonna put in there. And because I want this to be as dark as possible, I'm gonna add some of this seaweed. And I think that's plenty. So I'm going to try and pack it up like this. And as usual, <laughs> it breaks up, so um, we need a more tin foil. Um, it's always a little bit tricky when you um, see Breaking off here, uh, but we can just hang it up. And you don't want it to be too even. You want to create some air pockets in there because um, that's going to help um, make the, the, the patterns uh, more interesting, more uneven. Um, okay. I'm going to add a little bit more like this. So, I think that's good. And um, because this has already been fired and, um, and because it's a little more difficult to get the colors to attach to this uh, vitrified clay, I will put this um, at the upper part of the barrel because that's gonna get more heat, more rapid heat, and it can, it can sustain it. So I'm gonna put this aside and use it to um, when we stack the pots or the kiln. <laughs> Another one of the experiments that I'm gonna do this time is that um, I have applied some colored slip to these uh, pots. 
in order to create a, a different surface for the for the pit fire to paint on. Um, this one is blue. Um, I don't know how clear that comes out in the video. This one is, uh, I think, green. Um, or is this the one? And one is yellow. Uh, the green and the yellow is not so um, so powerful color, but still, it's. If you look, um, this is reclaimed clay. So if you look inside, it's actually sort of reddish. Uh, there's some iron in it. So I want to create a more clean surface. Now the downside of doing this is it's not as shiny as um, it would be if I burnished it or if I used a tear cigalata. But still, I think it's it's uh, it's uh, smooth enough. Uh, so when I polish it in the end, it will be nice. So for these ones, I'm not going to use um, I'm not going to use very strong colorants, um, uh, and I'm not going to use any ferric chloride or sulfate or anything like that because I want to maintain sort of the the, the integrity of this um, this uh, surface. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, but <laughs> I'll try. Um, so I think I'm gonna use a little bit of steel wool, not too much, and I'm gonna stretch it a lot. Um, because the more you stretch this, the more fine uh, fine patterns you're gonna get like this. And that's, that leaves some really beautiful marks. Um, it will turn black, but it will still be very beautiful. Something like this. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna put some paper inside because that's gonna gonna burn inside and it's hopefully gonna gonna blacken um, blacken it more um, hopefully. Ah, let me see. Something like this. Um, and I think banana peel is going to be great on this one. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use some of the... Um, these are corn uh, leaves. Uh, they use also the very nice marks. Um, I'm going to use some of that. Um, and just as a contrast, I'm going to use not too much, but a little bit of the seaweed. Um, like that. I'm going to add a little bit of the copper, copper it, and some salt. I think, I think that's that's gonna be it for this one. And again, I like to crumble it um, because the more air pockets we can create, the more interesting it will be. forward to see how that will turn out.
another one is ready. One of my all-time favorite colorants is sulfuric chloride. Um, it's used in the electronic industry to etch um, uh, copper. I use this 40% uh, solution. Um, you can also water it down, uh, or you can buy 16%. And of course, the weaker it is, the less uh, powerful the color is. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Um, so I pour it on the pot, typically a couple of layers. To do this, you should wear some gloves and some eye protection. It is etching and definitely not good to get on your hand. Now, some of you may think now that this fair chloride, and these are bold, it's probably not gonna be food safe. And you're right, <laughs> uh, at least not officially. But what I found is that there are some sealants, uh, and I'm going to test out a sealant from an Australian company that is going to completely close the surface and make it food safe. So I'm gonna try that out uh, later. It's on its way from Australia, it takes quite some time. But um, it is approved to be food safe, and I've seen the test. It's very, very, um, it's very solid. You can put uh, oil and red wine and soups and everything in it, and it just peels off. So it should be good. I'll try that. If I don't survive, um, I hope you have a good life. <laughs> So again, these ones are going to be beautiful, and I think actually I'm just going to leave it with this. See these uh, stripes? If you if you try and pour it over again, they're not going to hit the same stripes, and it's just going to kind of kind of make it make it more solid. So I kind of like this. Um, there's still a little bit left in here. I think that's good enough for now. I'm gonna pour it back into the container. That's why I use these cheap uh, plastic uh, uh, things for dishwashing or something. And we put it back in there. So now you just have to let it dry. If it's wet and you try and grab it up in the tin foil, it could theoretically eat away some of that tin foil. So I try and, and, and let it stand here in the sun. Nice sunny day. And, um, and let it dry a little bit first. So now the fire is out of this uh, barrel. And as you see, all the paint is gone. It just left this uh, layer of sod, which is fine because that's gonna be there anyway when we start doing the pit fire. So now at least we got rid of the paint and it's just gonna be more easy to handle. I'm not gonna get this blue paint on my on my clothes and, and fingers. So now it's ready for pit fire. Another experiment that I did this time is uh, with the chair cigarette. Uh, because I did have some problems in the past <clears throat> that sometimes it flaked off. And I tried all kinds of things and uh, I tried different recipes and I tried to combine it with different clays and stuff. But one thing that <clears throat> I also found out is that if you fire it, a bisque fire it a little bit higher, I usually fire it to uh, 950 degrees centigrade. Uh, if you fire it a little higher, it will stick a little bit. It will kind of, kind of stick to it. And um, the, the, the downside is that it will be a little less shiny. So, so this is a good example. Um, as you can see, it, it looks like it's really well attached to the clay. It is a little less shiny than it would otherwise be, but I think it's shiny enough. Um, especially when I use a polish, maybe a acrylic uh, uh, polish, that will make it uh, really shiny still. And I kind of like the shape and everything. And as you can see, um, this is uh, also a reclaimed clay. So it's a little bit red, but with the tear cigalata, we get this beautiful white uh, surface. So we are assembling the new bonfire grid for the second um, 
oil drum. These handles only serve the purpose of making it easier to to put them into the to the oil drum. I'm not sure how long they're gonna last. I have another one that I used quite a few times. It still look okay, but the, I'm sure that the the grid itself, because it's cast iron, it's gonna last forever. So uh, it's gonna be good anyway. As you noticed, uh, most often I use tin foil uh, to wrap the pots in to create sort of a sagger, so an enclosed space. But you don't need to do that. You could also just put the pots into the pit and sprinkle some combustibles, oxide, salt, whatever, and, and leave it like that. What, what I found is that it tends to get a little darker when you do that. But that's nice. You put sawdust and all kinds of things around the pot. That is nice too. You can also use a paper bag. This is just like a shopping bag paper, and 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 put it inside that with some um, combustibles or whatever you want to use. And I'm actually going to do that for one pot because this is a, another um, experiment. You could say this actually turned out really nice in many ways. It's light and it's uh, beautiful. Unfortunately, this is one of those times where the Hair cigalata flaked off, and and I think you can you can, you can see it here uh, places where it flaked off uh, like that, uh, and also up here. And of course that's not very good. I tried to remove it, and but I can't remove all of it. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna refire this, and I'm gonna give it a more raw kind of fire. So I'm not gonna wrap it up in tin foil. I'm gonna. I put it in a paper bag. I'm gonna put some um, some strong color in, some some uh, seaweed in, and uh, I'm putting it in, in the in the other part of the barrel to give it as much heat as possible. Maybe it will melt off some of that um, tear cigalata. Uh, maybe it won't. But in any case, I give it a last try. sodium carbonate and some copper carbonate so my little lunch lunch box so like that just gonna use some um, wire some some yeah. Keep it together. It will burn away anyway, but um, it will help just keep it together. The first phase of it. So, let's see how that turns out. Another one of my favorites are these uh, copper mesh. Uh, it looks almost like a stocking or something. It's uh, from a sponge. Uh, you can buy these sponges and then when you unwrap them, uh, they, they have this sort of a tube to it. And you can use that to um, wrap over your pot like this. Um, and it creates, if you're lucky, it creates these beautiful patterns. 
You can also get it in steel. Uh, I've seen very little difference. Um, you need to have the perfect uh, atmosphere um, to get a different color from the copper. If you do, it can turn red or greenish and can actually be very, very beautiful. But most often it just becomes black. So these black patterns, these black lines, this is also beautiful. Another good thing about this is that you can um, you can use it to um, to uh, to wrap in some um, some combustibles. In this case, I'm gonna put some uh, some banana peels in here. Um, So this is uh, uh, one way of using it. You just use it like that, add some salts or maybe some, uh, some or, carbon, or copper carbonate, um, other combustibles, whatever. But you can also combine this with uh, uh, ferric chloride or, um, or one of my other favorites, uh, the sulfate, especially cobalt sulfate. In this case, I think I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of uh, ferric chloride. Um, this bowl is made with uh, reclaimed clay and as you can see um, the inside here it's kind of had this reddish iron iron based uh, 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 color to it so for this one I tried to use this uh, colored slip on the outside it's a white slip to try and change the surface the canvas on on which we uh, paint on so I don't know how this is going to turn out but I hope it will be good So with this one, I'm also going to put some of the cones inside. I'm going to put some, some seaweed. Um, I'm going to put a bit of um, carbonate, some salt, and as always, wrap it up in tin foil. I will try and add some uh, banana peels um, on the outside. Banana peels are great. They, 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 if you're lucky, they turn kind of orangey um, in a very beautiful way. Um, so very much like that. Um, we're gonna add just a little bit of the, seaweed, of the seaweed on the outside and just a very little steel wool. It's almost always a little more difficult to wrap up the, the, the bolts, um, but if you're careful, it will turn out okay. You've got to take it in steps. I'll wrap the outside, I'm going to wrap the inside. And then a layer all around it. wrapped up but as you see it's it's very uneven and uh, having all these uh, uh, air bubbles and, and, uh, and crumbled up uh, 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 tin foil will leave all these different um, spaces in there some there's going to be air and some it's going to be trapped and that will help create interesting patterns um, on the bottom 
another color that I really like a lot is uh, cobalt sulfate. It's not that easy to get your hands on, and unfortunately we only have this a uh, little bit left. But it creates this beautiful bluish kind of color uh, that I really, really like. So I'm just going to use whatever I have left on this one. Contrary to the ferric chloride, uh, with the sulfate you need more than one layer. So I'm going to put it on, put it back in the bottle, put it on until I used, well, almost all of this if possible. As you see, you can hardly see that anything sticks to it, but it does. Um, it, it will show in, in the fire. So, um, let's end this. Go back. As you can see, there's actually less now, so some of it did stick to the pot. I'm just going to let it dry a little bit, soak in, and then uh, add the next layer. Dries really quickly in the sun. Now you can see there's no, no watery on the surface. So I'm just going to add another layer. So that's it. And I'm going to add maybe one or two more layers. I want to have as much color as possible. And there's so little left here anyway that I can just as well use it all. This is another one of my experiments this time because I've been trying different kind of burnishing. As I mentioned, I had problems with Tea Cigalata. And the reason I use Tea Cigalata is of course to, to change the surface so it becomes more, uh, more, more shiny. Uh, also because it can layer, uh, give it a color. Um, but you can also burn this in many other ways. For this part, I tried a different technique that I haven't tried before, where I let it completely dry, bone dry, and then I soak it with uh, baby oil, and then I polish it. It did turn out somewhat more shiny than, than, than just having the pure part. It's not as shiny as the Tea Cigalata, but on the good side of it is that there's nothing to flake off. And, and I mean, it looks okay, so I'll see how that turns out. Now I finished up wrapping up all the pots. There's 17 all in all, so as predicted, that's a little more than I can put into one barrel. So good thing is that I have two now, so I'm gonna fill both of them, which is nice because I can probably have maybe eight, 10 in each. But so this time I'm gonna have enough space um, for each of them. So um, I'm gonna start doing that now. Stacking the kiln, um, you can do in so many different ways. Uh, there's so many different materials you can use. Of course you need some wood to create a fire, but maybe you also want to create some fumes. You can use sawdust to do that, or you can use hay, or you can use uh, this uh, pine that I use for my Christmas tree. Uh, if you add these fuming elements like sawdust and, and, and the pine and, and wood scraps, it will turn the parts more dark. And if you have less of that, it will be a little more of a combustible color set that makes it. So I don't like it to be too dark. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a layer down here Kind of sip to kind of isolate um, the pot from the button because I want to keep the button free so we can get some air suction in there. So for that, this time I'm going to use some of this and as I have it, that's going to make like a soft bed. So like that because this way it's going to separate the pot from um, from the button. I'm also going to add some of these. Uh, all the wood shavings uh, because that's going to help create a little bit of fire down here, I think.
And finally, I'm gonna add uh, just a little bit of wood down there, uh, just some small pieces, just to make sure that the um, fire doesn't die out when it gets down to here. We have a little hardwood, a little bit of pine, and uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. So now I will start adding uh, the first layer of pots. In general, with the way that I fire, because I light the fire from the top and it eats its way down, uh, the temperature is going to be higher at the top than it is at the bottom. Uh, so if there's something you want to have a really high temperature, if you put it at the top or in the upper layers, if it's not so important, you could put it uh, further below. These uh, two bowls, I think will be okay, even if they're not super hot. So I will put them down here. I'm gonna add some more wood. So, ready to put another layer in. You also have to be a little bit careful uh, thinking about if there's something that's very fragile, you should not put it at the bottom, because even though there are separations between them with the wood and stuff, when the wood burns, they're gonna fall on each other. So you don't wanna put something really heavy on top and something very fragile at the bottom. So think about that, how it falls down. I mean, it's difficult to predict, but as much as you can. I'm also going to add some paper in between the layers. It's just gonna help uh, the fire get down and, and, and distribute down to uh, the layers of, um, of the firewood. So I think we're ready for the last layer on this one. So I'm thinking maybe I should take these ones. These ones are the ones that um, I want to fire really rapidly um, and I want them to have a high heat. Uh, they're just wrapped in this um, paper bag and lots of uh, very strong colorant. So I'm gonna put these on the top. So now I have, what is it, eight pots, something in there. Uh, and the last layer, you can see is a little bit below the, the, the rim of, um, of the barrel. So now I'm gonna build a bonfire on top of it. I'm gonna use a little bit combination of small woods and and some uh, pine that, that uh, fires up really fast and some hardwood that will uh, keep it going for a long time. Uh, the pine wood creates higher temperature, but it burns out really fast. And the hardwood is not as warm. I don't know how big the difference is. There's a little bit of difference, but it burns, of course, a lot longer. And um, so a combination I found works really well. very top I put all these little uh, light ones. On the top I have uh, lots of these very uh, light pine wood um, pieces of wood. will make it easier to, to start up. I'm also, uh, also, uh, <laughs> I'm also gonna add some of these um, heat max beads. Um, use it in my, my fireplace and I'm gonna top it off with a bit of alcohol just to make sure that it lights really well. It's a bit of cheating, but it works. So basically I'm gonna do the same thing with this barrel. I'm gonna start out with a layer of this Christmas tree leftover. <laughs> and some uh, wood shavings.
and some small pieces of wood. This is just to make sure that when the fire gets down there, there's still some wood to, um, to keep the fire going. I'm also going to add I'm also going to add just a couple of hardwood pieces down there. And again, that's just to uh, make sure that when the fire gets down there, there's still some uh, fuel left. So now we're going to put the pots in. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to take the bigger uh, and more solid ones uh, in the bottom because they can, they can, they can sustain the, the, the other pots dropping on them. So, like that. And of course, be careful when you do this, <laughs> because if you drop uh, pieces of wood too hard on your pots, they may, they may crack. So be careful when you do this. And again, I'm going to add some newspaper in the layers. I don't know how important it is, uh, but it can be a little bit helpful, I guess, in, in the distributing the, uh, the fire. I don't want to put them too tight or put too many in each layer because I, I do want to have some space left for my um, for my wood because I want to create as much uh, fire and heat as possible. So, and, and this time I only have two pots left and as you see, there's quite a lot of space up here. So I think I'm just gonna leave the three of them there, put some more wood and then the last uh, two pots. This wood is actually something I got from my very kind neighbor. He's been uh, rebuilding a lot, new, uh, new porch, uh, which I think this is from, and this is hardwood, very good. And he also changed the floor in his house. And this is like, I think, 70, 100 years old uh, hardwood as well. So very dry, very good. Um, and he, he knows that I'm doing a pit fire, so he's kind enough to just put it in my, in my driveway. And I had to chop it up. But it's free, free wood. And of course, this kind of wood I wouldn't use inside in my house. But for pit fire, it's perfect. The alcohol. This is just pure alcohol. Uh, for cleaning, so don't drink it. So, that's it. Now we're ready to light it. Before you light your pits, make sure that there's nothing, you know, just around them that, that can burn, catch fire, because maybe some of it is gonna fall out of the, of the barrel. Take it away. I think this is uh, safe enough. So now comes the fun part. So now, the magic happens. Keep your finger crossed and nurse the fire. Uh, I'm gonna let it just uh, catch fire slowly. And then when, when, when the heat picks up, I will uh, probably add a little more um, wood, where probably hardwood to, to sustain the life of the fire. warm here. Now that the first layer, uh, the top uh, bonfire is kind of burned down a little bit, 
I'm going to top it off with uh, some more uh, wood because I want to sustain the fire for as long as possible. This is really, really warm. It's nice. It's good. often ask me what temperature that I fire my pit fire to. To be honest, I'm not quite sure because it is a wildfire, so it's not controlled in any way. I just try to make it as hot as possible. Knowing that fire usually doesn't get much warmer than 800 to 1000 degrees with natural air circulation. If you, if you push uh, air into it, I think it can get hotter than that. But I don't use, uh, you know, I don't have any methods for controlling the, the, the temperature. And I don't use a thermocouple because it would be only in one spot in the barrel that it would measure. Uh, so it wouldn't work. And of course, I can't put cones in there <laughs> because it's just filled up with wood. Instead, what I'm using is this uh, laser-based uh, thermometer. Um, I got it in a car shop. It was quite inexpensive. You have to be aware that there are different kinds. Uh, this kind go up to 800 degrees centigrade. It's a little more expensive than the cheaper ones, but they only go to three or 400 degrees, which is not enough. So basically with this one, I can check whether it's up to 800 degrees. If it's more than that, it, it just doesn't show it. It's very, very simple to use. Um, there's a readout here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it here. So let's go and see how, how it looks uh, when we point it to the barrels. So let's see how warm it gets uh, when we use this. You can see it's six, 700 degrees. Um, up in the top and then when we go down further we can see only 200 degrees down here of course a much less and um, so what i use this for is also to see how much of the heat have gone down to the barrel how, how far the, the fire have traveled so that's it's, uh, it's very good for that it is a little bit smoky um it comes and goes and uh, well, if you want to fire pit fire, you got to have neighbors that are not too crazy. Oh, there you go. I don't know, sometimes it hits something, maybe some painted wood or something. I don't know. So there will be some smoke, but um, yeah, well, I have very kind neighbors, so um, it's not a problem here. Another way that you can see um, how far the fire have traveled down is if it's a brand new barrel. So this one had this beautiful blue paint on it, but as it heats up, the paint is gonna get burned off. So you can see very clearly how far down the fire have gone. And if you look at this side, it have actually traveled down further. So that's another good indication. Of course, you can also just use your hand and feel it, but don't touch it because it is warm. <laughs> On the other one here that I used for a few years, of course, there's no paint left, so you can't really see much here. In this barrel, I um, added some pots with no um, saga, so it was not wrapped in tinfoil. So I added some um, Copper, uh, carbonate, some salts, uh, and it creates these amazing flames, <laughs> all kinds of colors, and it's probably not very healthy, but I'm standing in the wind, so I'm not getting all the fumes, uh, but I just love it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Another great way to see if the fire travels well uh, into the barrel <clears throat> is if you look at the, um, the ventilation holes and see, here you can see that the flames are actually down here and that's a good sign because of course we want it to travel all the way down in the barrel and then on this side it's already there but then if we look at the other side it's not quite there which is very normal that it doesn't it doesn't um, travel down in the same speed all around the barrel but this is a good sign
Now the flames have almost died out. It's just smoldering or what you call it, but it's um, it's very, very warm, but there's no more, very little flames. Same thing in the other one here. Um, let's take a look at that. So what I can see now is that um, the, the tin foil have burned off, which is a good sign because I think it's about seven, eight hundred degrees where the tin foil um, kind of dissolves, uh, becomes like paper and it just dissolves. So that means that it has been warm enough. And I can see that, that uh, the heat is all the way down in the, in the bottom, it's very warm here. So it's a good sign. So what I do now is that I will put, I will put the lid on, not completely, I will still keep it open a couple of hours more so there's uh, some airflow in there uh, so it doesn't die out completely. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Um, just put it on like this and um, now I will leave it like that for I don't know, maybe an hour, two hours. So now I will go inside and cook some dinner. It's been a long day. I think it's almost six o'clock now. And uh, I've been working outside since 10 in the morning or something. So it's been a good day. And now we'll just let the lid be half on. And then after dinner, before it gets too dark, I will just go and check. And then I will put the lid on uh, entirely. And it will kind of, kind of choke um, and change the atmosphere in, in, the, in the pit uh, a bit, uh, making it a little more like a reduction atmosphere, kind of. Uh, and then I will leave it overnight. It's very important that you don't take out the pots too early. I, I made a short video about how to avoid cracking, and one of the most important things is to be patient, which <laughs> I'm not. You probably know what I'm talking about. You want to see the result. But please leave them in the barrel until it's completely cold. Because if you take them out and they're too warm, then they will crack. Or at least it's very likely they will. So be patient. Now it's seven o'clock. Um, I had some dinner, it was nice. And the sun is setting and uh, they are slowly dying out. Or the fire is slowly dying out. And I think I'm gonna put the lids on. But before I do that, I just wanna take a peek, look inside and see how it is now. It looks good. Still a lot of heat down there. So um, I think this is a perfect time to, um, to put the lid on. And this is going to sort of choke it a little bit but um, it'll be perfect. So let's take a look at the other one. That's pretty much the same. There's a little more heat down there, but it's perfect. So um, I'm gonna put it on. That's it. It's not gonna kill the fire completely because we do have um, the holes at the bottom. So they're still gonna get some oxygen in, but it's gonna slow it down. Um, and that's exactly what we want. And it will be, the atmosphere in there is gonna change, maybe not to reduction, but at least some uh, less than oxidated. So um, I'm gonna leave it here overnight and tomorrow morning, I will open it up and see how it turned out. Good morning. I just had my first cup of coffee. The sky is blue and it's a good day. And we have two barrels of pots that we're gonna empty. It's always super exciting. So even though I've done this quite a lot of times, uh, I'm still a bit surprised <laughs> when I unpack it. Sometimes for the good, sometimes not quite as much, but um, I'm always hoping for the best. So. I won't keep you any longer. Let's go and see how it looks. It's always exciting when you when you first remove the lid and look down and see. Yeah. At least it doesn't look like it's all broken. 
some of it at least is still intact so that's a good first sign let's go and take the other one So, there we go. That looks pretty good too. It doesn't look broken, that's some interesting colors there, I see at least. So, now it's time to empty. This time I actually let the barrel cool down a lot of time overnight because I actually started the fire a little bit earlier today than I usually do. So they're completely cold now. But in case they're not, I recommend that you use these uh, gloves. These are welding gloves, quite cheap in the builder's market. But we shouldn't really be using them <laughs> because if it's too hot to handle, there's a very high risk that they will crack when you take them out. So please, please be patient. I have a video about how to avoid cracking your pots when you do pit fire. There's a link somewhere here. Go and watch that. Taking them out too early is definitely one of the biggest factors of cracking. So today it's totally cool, so there's no rush. I do sometimes use gloves, uh, just normal gloves, because it's very dirty, it's very really dusty, um, and not to get completely dark. I want to use that. So let's go ahead and do that. When you take out your pots, be very careful because they have now fallen on each other. And when you take out one pot, maybe it will uh, fall on another one and they can be broken that way. This is the one that I refired. I can see now that there's a lot of uh, stuff that's attached to it. And some of the Terzigalada got burned off, some of it didn't. So before I can adjust this one, I need to clean the surface a little more. This is experimental, it's not too important. They were kind of, you know, leftovers anyway. Um, this one looks really interesting. There's still a lot of cleaning to do. I need to scrape off some of this, uh, probably some of the seaweed and the salt that have attached itself. But I think underneath the, the, the dust and the ashes. I think this one is gonna be really nice. I'm looking forward to cleaning that up. This is one where I used the, the uh, what do you call it? the mesh, the, the, uh, the copper mesh. And as you can see here, when I remove this, whatever, whatever is left of it, uh, and clean this up, um, we get, not on all sides of it, but on some sides of it, we get Get this beautiful pattern and this I really love and once I get uh, this cleaned up there's a lot of interesting green there I don't know exactly what that is it could be the copper um, or the uh, copper carbonate and um, so this is turning out really really nice and this is also the one that I burnished with this new technique of uh, applying uh, baby oil and then uh, burnishing it but when this get polished, it will be really nice. This is another one of my bowls. Um, this is done in stoneware, reclaimed. I added um, this white slip on the outside, which has turned out nice. I do have some heavy, uh, I don't know what it is, dust or something that attached to it. I'll see if we can scrape some of that off, but I kind of like how it turned out. There's another one with partially uh, ferrochloride. Again, there's some, um, some uh, I think ashes and stuff that kind of burned itself a little bit into it. I can clean it out. And I think this one is gonna be really beautiful when we, when we polish that. See, this is the part that I actually expected a lot from. And it actually turned out really nice colors, but the bottom broke. <laughs> I think it may have been a little too heavy, uh, so it's a constructional issue. Again, I never, I never had that before, but it's a good example that the, yeah, you see, it is too thick. Anyway, it's a good example again of how this experiment actually works. You see how 
even though this clay has been vitrified, it actually did get some really nice colors from the pit fire. So it is possible, I just didn't construct it well enough. That's my fault. It's fine. So this one looks good. See this one? It's actually interesting because this is, I don't know if you can see then on, on the camera, but this is a very red. I don't usually get red colors like this. It's like deep red and there's some blue and there's some icon. This is going to be very beautiful once I polish it. It's a nice pot. It's not too heavy and yeah, it's all in all. Very, very good. That alone, I would say, is worth my whole fire purchase. Because this is made with the blue colored slip. And this is actually turning out very beautiful. Look at this. Again, it can be difficult to see uh, on this camera, but look at the blues and the red and uh, some yellow out there, probably banana peel and some green down here. This is, this is going to be really beautiful. So I'm definitely going to do more of that blue colored slip that is very, very good. This is another sort of experiment because usually, usually I don't do high textured uh, pots for pit fire. And this one didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. The rim is not exactly how I wanted. But then I thought, well, why not just try and throw it into the pot and see what happens. And this has actually turned out really, really beautiful. This is, this is very surprising to me. But a good surprise, not the bad ones, but a good surprise. So that one is a plus. And here's another one with the, with the copper mesh. And again. It gives you these beautiful patterns. This. I love how, I mean, it, it could become green if I was lucky enough but it's just black but the patterns here are just beautiful really dark top I mean once I get this polished it will be very beautiful I love that too here's another one with uh, I think it had the yellow or the green uh, colored slip and I love see the green here and the red the black and I mean this is also very beautiful so Definitely gonna do more of the of the colored slip surface because those ones turn out nice. Nice. They're not as uh, shiny right now, but once I, I polish it and apply either the wax or the acrylic spray, they will be really nice. This is the last one. It's not so colorful, but I mean, it did leave some really nice colors on one side and more grayish uh, shades on the other. This is from the colored slip as well. That's it. That's all the parts that I got out of it. And there was three parts that cracked. So um, well, we have another 15 or so that turned out really nice. And so I'm gonna feel happy about that and uh, not too sad about the bad ones. I don't count the failures, I count the successes. And I hope you're gonna do that too. Now I'm gonna clean them up and I'm gonna polish them, I'm gonna apply uh, some treatment on the surface. Uh, some of them may be wax, some of them I may use an acrylic spray. Uh, it depends a little bit on, on what kind of surface I want. And I will add some uh, pictures of the results, the stupid pictures of the results in the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope you will come back. Maybe you will subscribe to the channel. Maybe you write a comment. If you have some questions, you're welcome. Share it with your friends. In any case, I'm going to do much more pit fire over the summer. So please come back and have a great day. Oh yeah, by the way, <clears throat> there's one other thing that I forgot to mention. And that is a good thing. Because uh, remember, I was trying out this new uh, fire schedule for securing a better uh, grip of my Terra Sigillata. 
So instead of firing into 950 degrees, I've bisque fired it this time to 1000 degrees. And I also changed a little bit on my terrace gelato recipe. And this time, there's none of it that have any flaking issues. So, I don't know, maybe I was just lucky. Maybe it is in fact better to fire it a little bit higher. At least this time, no flaking, perfect terrace gelato. So that is a very good sign. So I'll now go and polish uh, up the pots and take some nice pictures of them and apply them in the end of the video.